But hello everyone and welcome to Momentum channel. My name is Mo and in this video, we're gonna be providing an update uh, into our portfolio that we have with stock market investing. It's a portfolio consisting of dividend and growth investing approach, mainly through passive investing in high quality exchange traded funds. A quick look into our portfolio shows that the total market value of the portfolio currently sits at $386,675. It is showing an unrealized profit of $8,317, or the portfolio is up by 2.2%. Definitely some nice gains. Pretty much all of our holdings in this portfolio are currently in positive territory, with the exception of two, one being our Smith Maneuver investment, which is all in Vanguard All Equity ETF portfolio, or V Equity, as well as few shares of Bank of Nova Scotia. We have still 15 shares of Bank of Nova Scotia that is down by close to 7%. We're holding on to our shares of Bank of Nova Scotia. We're waiting for it to get to that positive return. And after that hits that range, we're going to be selling it. Uh, for the rest of the portfolio, we're going to maintain this. You'd notice one change compared to last week. Last week in our portfolio, we still had shares of X equity. It was the BlackRock all equity uh, ETF. And although they were in positive return, given that we already have some shares of uh, V equity, we wanted to kind of streamline our portfolio a little bit better. We decided to kind of pull the trigger and sell those shares in profit and instead use those shares to buy more shares of our international ETFs. Ultimately, when it comes to the international exposure breakdown, we want to get to the point whereby we have 30% of our exposure to international ETFs. 30% to US ETFs and 40% to Canadian markets. And this breakdown takes exact uh, breakdown exposure of different geographies into account. For instance, when we are investing in V equity, uh, V equity gives us exposure uh, geographically diversified. So for example, around 30% of that exposure might be to uh, the shares of uh, Canadian stocks. In fact, to be more accurate, 30% um, is exposed to Canadian stocks, 44% exposed to US stocks, and only 26% is exposure to international stocks. We took, we, we were taking actually those specific breakdowns into account in calculating our accurate, um, you know, international exposure. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we are a little bit far off from hitting that target of 30% for international. We are currently much more exposed to Canadian stocks at 52% and a little bit more overexposure to US stocks at 32%. We're trying to bring it down by putting more funds into this portfolio and buying more shares of our international uh, you know, ETFs. And that's actually what we've been doing. After we sold our shares of X equity, we used the majority of the funds to buy more shares of uh, V, uh, that's uh, Vanguard, FTSE Emerging Market All Cap Index. We also bought some additional shares of XEF or iShares Core MSCI. Europe and Far East Index ETF. Looking at our overall portfolio status at this time, our largest position is in VDY or Vanguard uh, FTSE Canadian High Dividend Yield Index ETF. We have 3,922 shares of it at a market value of close to $169,500 or about 44% of our portfolio. This uh, VDY is currently up by 3.7%. It does pay its dividends on a monthly basis. Our second larger holding is currently at, uh, it belong to V Equity or uh, with a total shares of $2,565. It's down by 4.5%. Um, even though it's in a negative territory, it's definitely way better than a few weeks ago. So we're sh showing some signs of recovery there. We have 23% of our portfolio belonging to this breakdown. Uh, and it uh, does pay its dividends uh, distributions only once a year, and it's paid in January. So we are expecting to get some uh, large uh, dividend distributions from V Equity in uh, January of next year. And the goal is to reinvest all of it and put it back buying more shares of V Equity. Our third large holding is VFE. Uh, it's falling very closely to that position of V Equity. VFE is Vanguard S&P 500 Index ETF. We have 889 shares between my wife and I, or a market value of close to $87,000. It currently accounts for 22% of our portfolio. It is up by 6.2%. VFV does pay 
distributions at a fairly uh, low uh, dividend yield, and it is paid in quarterly in the month of January, April, July, and October. So our next uh, payment of their distributions is expected to be done in January. Our next big holding is XEF. As we talked about, we have close to 5% exposure there, followed closely by V, uh, which we have another 5% exposure there. For XEF, we have 575 shares, and it is up by 4.6%. And for V, we have 555 shares, and it's up by 3.6%. With XEF, it does pay its dividend distributions biannually in the months of January and June. And for V, it does pay its distributions quarterly in the months of January, March, June, and September. Lastly, we have 150 shares of XIC, uh, which is iShares Core S&P uh, Toronto Stock Exchange Cap Composite Index ETF. Here we are uh, pretty much through the XIC getting exposure to the entire stock market, major stocks, most of the stocks in the stock market in Canadian Toronto Stock Exchange. It accounts for 1% of our portfolio and currently is up by uh, about half a percent. It does also pay its dividend distributions in the months of January, March, June, and September. As you notice, pretty much most of uh, our dividend distributions are paid in are, are expected to be paying us some dividends in the months of January of 2023. We are definitely excited about that, and we are anticipating a large dividend distributions paid out uh, to us at that time. With that being said, we are uh, reporting as well on our total expected annual uh, dividend income. Uh, given the latest dividend yield for our uh, for our positions and the number of shares we have, we are anticipating a total annual uh, dividend amount of ten thousand six hundred nine dollars in one full year. This amount grows as we buy more shares of these uh, growth and dividend paying ETFs. If we divide it equally between the 12 months, that accounts for $884 dividend income per month. And if you divide it equally to 365 days, on average, we are getting paid $29 in dividend distributions uh, each and every day, which is just remarkable. Uh, our approach, of course, is not just counting on dividend distributions, knowing that the growth of your portfolio is also uh, important. Um, or even though we, when we get paid dividends, we are not really using it at this time, we're repurposing it and buying more shares of stocks. Um, it may consider be considered with some investors uh, that you know it's nice to have that passive income coming in your portfolio in future years. Let's say as you get paid this dividend, uh, let's say if you have early retirement, you would be able to tap into it and easily use the dividend. But it's not just limited to dividend income because you know even if it uh, grows ETFs, as you gain those appreciation on your portfolio and you gain appreciation on your shares, you could also apply the 4% rule, 3% rule, or whatever, and sell some of your shares and get the capital gain and use that to fund your life or post-retirement uh, uh, projects or lifestyle that you would like to pursue. Uh, our portfolio currently has a dividend yield of 2.74%, but the yield on cost, depending on the based on the cost of the shares that we bought them at, our yield on cost is slightly higher at 2.8%. Not too bad, uh, knowing that this is uh, joint kind of combined approach to investing of both dividend and growth uh, portfolio. In terms of our uh, plans for the week ahead in the stock market, we would like to uh, put some more funds into the account. We are not trying to rush it. Probably we would put around, around 1,000 to 2,000 more shares. If you get some dividend distributions, we we'll use that to repurpose and buy more shares. If Bank of Nova Scotia returns positively, we would like to share sell those shares. But if not, we will hold on to them until they hit the positive return. Uh, the fo main focus for us would be buying two main ETFs in our portfolio, uh, one being the XEF and the other one being our shares of V or Vanguard, uh, uh, the Emerging Markets All Cap Index ETF. We would like to also buy some shares of uh, our uh, Vanguard All Equity ETF. That's part of a separate portfolio that we have in Questrade and we're reporting on the nose numbers here. As we put more shares and as we pay down our mortgage through the Smith Maneuver technique, we get access to our equity of our home and we can reborrow it to then invest. And that's how we are seeing that once a month, usually we get more funds into our um, accounts for V equity and we're using that to buy uh, shares of uh, that specific ETF fund. 
before we wrap up this video, I want to also share with you the latest book that I'm reading right now in the stock market. It's a book by Chris Hogan. You might know him as one of the uh, you know experts and uh, uh, kind of financial uh, analyst on Dave Ramsey's shows. He is a close friend of Dave Ramsey. Uh, this book is called Everyday Millionaires. Uh, and It uh, talks about how ordinary people have built extraordinary wealth and how you can too. Uh, I've just started reading this book. I'm into the first 10 15 pages. The book talks about how getting to that millionaire status is not something out of reach and anybody, how anybody in fact can, can get there. They talk about uh, their research, uh, having, uh, you know, talked to over 10,000 millionaires uh, across the US and sharing what are some of the traits that they followed, what are some of the attitudes and uh, actions that they've taken to get to that status and how it's possible for anybody to get there. They also try to uh, talk about the key myth that exists out there, um, thinking that you know getting to a millionaire, a millionaire status is not possible, or if you want to get there, you need an inheritance. Um, the book really tried to go through uh, those myths and debunk them. Uh, they talk about uh, the first few pages that I've read. They talk about how if you look at the uh, those people who have reached millionaires based on their research, uh, almost seventy two percent of them have not. Uh, receive any inheritance whatsoever. So it's really pure, purely their hard work, financial planning, financial discipline, and really being smart about their money, how they got to that millionaire status based on their net worth we're talking. Um, and there's only a small subset of folks that have got inheritance. And even those, most of them, their inheritance has been less than 100,000. So it's not that just through the inheritance, they've been able to really reach to that financial status. I, I do encourage you to pick up the book. I have borrowed this from library and just starting this book. As I learn more about it, I might be sharing some of my key nuggets in the future videos, but I wanted to share with you uh, some of those initial observations and learnings with you. Uh, this next year, I really want to uh, spend some more time, continue to uh, borrow books from library, uh, books that help me understand uh, better you know, how I can go about uh, planning for my life in terms of financial planning, how I can be more disciplined with our money and how we can expedite our journey to reaching financial independence. I hope uh, you found this video beneficial and hopefully it triggered you to also uh, consider uh, exploring financial independence and financial planning, uh, something that uh, would add value to your life and hopefully makes you happier as a result of that. If you have any question whatsoever about this video or about the journey towards uh, getting to financial independence, please uh, let us know in the comment section down below. I'll, I'll read through each and every comment and I would love to discuss it with you as well. As always, I'm of course, I'm not a financial planner uh, nor a financial expert, but I'm sharing with you some of my own learnings that I've gained over the years through the mistakes that I've made as well as some of the successes that I've had and trying to uh, use this platform to share my learnings with you. And of course, through uh, your comments, hopefully we can learn together and get to that uh, this uh, ultimate goal that we all are uh, pursuing. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this video. My name is Mo, and as always, I would love it if you subscribe to our channel here on Momentum Finance. We post every week several videos about investing, whether it's investing in the stock market, finances, as well as discussing ways to reach financial independence. Thank you, and I hope to see you all next time.